Thank you, Richard. Uh, it's really nice to be here. Uh, uh, and difficult. Uh, well, after vis witnessing uh, this morning's uh, uh, professional expertise, listening the, the, the linguistic acrobacy and uh, following artistic presentations, uh, it's really hard for me. Uh, it's really not easy. To, uh, to, to continue on a subject which is American exceptionalism. But anyway, here we are. Uh, and I will do my best uh, uh, to give you an overview in three topics. The first one is about the trends and differences uh, in the use of incarceration. Secondly, look uh, on the basis of these, uh, these figures, the role of crime in this development, how much uh, crime can explain these differences. And then the thirdly, uh, um, look a, a little more about the attempts uh, to explain uh, some of uh, this uh, variance. Uh, and I will do this with the help of, of uh, comparative, cross-comparative uh, data from, from um, uh, different samples of countries, uh, basically, uh, uh, Western countries, mostly European countries, but I will also try, and that, that may be my mistake, uh, try to include the United States in the analysis. Uh, I am totally aware that to do that properly, it would be better to someone uh, knowing the local uh, conditions better. But anyway, just to open for the discussions, I'm, I'm trying to present uh, some data on that too. So, uh, we can go... Uh, directly uh, uh, to the uh, trends. Uh, let's look first at the, the uh, global chart on the position of the United States uh, in the most extensive comparison we can have in 218 countries, incarceration rates, which is always uh, relative to 100,000 population. You see here this uh, 218 nation news is here in the lead uh, with uh, 716 uh, prisoners. The uh, global mean is 176 and median 134. Uh, these rates are, uh, if we look uh, more carefully, uh, they are unevenly uh, distributed. Uh, uh, look at the different uh, regions. The Nordic countries start from the bottom, uh, then uh, comes Western Europe, then comes Eastern Europe with about 200 uh, prisoners, Baltic countries 277. In between, uh, you have Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, then you have Russia, little uh, below 500 prisoners, and then uh, United States. Uh, so, uh, United States really is in this statistics uh, truly exceptional without any serious competition. Uh, uh, Russia is the worst rival uh, uh, after uh, coming after uh, 200 prisoners. Uh, it's an interesting to know that 500, uh, five years ago, uh, Russia had more prisoners uh, than the United States uh, with, with 688. Uh, now 200 less. Uh, that means that it, it uh, seems to be possible to make a change. So, as a nation, United States uh, stands uh, alone, but what about then uh, 50 uh, plus 1 states, uh, which all have different penal policies, as has been uh, told. Uh, Let's look how it, uh, when we add Western Europe and Eastern Europe and then all the uh, United States different states, uh, now with the total population including jails. Uh, so what we have here is that practically the US states, they continue from the spot where the Eastern European uh, states uh, end. So also from... Uh, <coughs> This point of view, uh, you could say that uh, both in a state-by-state -state comparison and uh, as, a, as a whole comparison, the uh, United States is different. So, but things have not been uh, always uh, 
if we look at trends uh, uh, this way, let's look about 100 years uh, back. And Nordic comparison uh, between Finland, uh, other Nordic countries, and the United States. It's interesting to know that exactly 100 years ago, Finland and the United States had the same uh, number of uh, prisoners. After that, Finland went even higher. Uh, we had difficulties, uh, 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 different social and political crises. Uh, but then, uh, from the uh, early 50s onwards, there has been a consistent decline. At the same time, when the uh, United States jumped up. Uh, and now the situation is that the US uh, prisoner rate is tenfold to that uh, in the Finnish one. What we see also is a uh, remarkable stability of the other Nordic countries, at least as long as we keep the United States in the picture. Uh, if we move uh, the scale, then of course uh, you see more variation. Uh, what about other European countries? I just have a few uh, comparisons here to go, go uh, to see that quickly. Uh, in Western uh, uh, continental Europe, you see, uh, in fact, uh, uh, quite stable uh, trends. Germany has kept uh, its prisoner rates rather stable on the level of 80, uh, 90 prisoners per 100,000 inhabitants. S Switzerland even lower, uh, and also uh, Austria. So. Uh, it's not the case that everywhere incarceration rates and the use of imprisonment had been increasing. Somewhere it has, somewhere it hasn't. Uh, where it has uh, in Europe uh, is uh, United Kingdom, England and Wales, Scotland, Ireland. All these countries show a, a constant increase. Uh, so I don't uh, bother you with... Uh, uh, more details about these uh, trends, I think uh, many of them are known. Uh, we just next go to look at uh, possible explanations for these uh, differences and for these trends. And the first candidate is, of course, crime. How far can we explain uh, these uh, 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 statistics with reference to crime? We can look at cross-sectionally or in time. We can use victimization survey data or recorded crime data. And this is a comparison based on victimization uh, data. Now, the idea is that here in this uh, vertical axis, you see uh, incarceration rates. Here, you see victimization rate. And should there be a strong correlation, it would mean that uh, this line should go from, up, uh, uh, from uh, down left corner to upper right corner. You see two things from this graph. Uh, one is that United States, which is over there, victimization rate in the United States according to international crime victimization studies, it's not different from that in the rest of Europe. It's on the same level. Uh, and on the other hand, what you see is that there is no overall relation, uh, correlation between victimization and incarceration. Uh, so in that sense, it seems that other things than the level of crime explains uh, differences in uh, prisoner rates. Uh, we can also try to look this uh, with a trend data to, to, to see how changes in crime are reflected in uh, changes in imprisonment rate. And to do that, I have here a couple of comparisons. The first one is from the Nordic countries and England and Wales. Uh, so that I have uh, taken separately Finland and then added uh, Sweden, Denmark and Norway together and then England. And you see here, uh, and now this is 50 years uh, trend data, how uh, imprisonment rates have evolved in these uh, areas. And what you see here is that this is the... <coughs> Nordic uh, trend, you see, uh, it's flat uh, practically. And this is the Finnish uh, line from 60 to 2000, then coming from uh, up there, down on the Nordic level, and then staying there. And this is the uh, English, England and Wales. So we have three, completely three different uh, uh, prison curves, one stable, one coming up uh, to down, and one coming from uh, bottom to, 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 to uh, uh, higher. And 
when we then look at the recorded crime data in these uh, three uh, uh, regions or three countries, you see that they are practically identical. It would be very hard to conclude from this uh, uh, that uh, changes in the imprisonment rates would have been somehow uh, as a result of differences in crime. Uh, of course, this, doesn't, this is not a very sophisticated analysis. You get a lot of uh, other things with this kind of data, but that's not the point here. You could also ask whether this had any effect uh, in the development of a crime uh, with the fact that there has been differences in the use of imprisonment. That would be another conclusion. Uh, uh, another comparison from, uh, because of course you could say that, well, the Nordic countries, they are different than, uh, 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 and so on, but we can also compare Germany and the Netherlands. Uh, and here you have uh, prison data from Germany and prison data from the Netherlands. Uh, German has kept uh, a prisoner rate stable and the Netherlands has uh, increased very uh, dramatically and then again dropped it. Uh, and if we now look at crime, uh, crime data in these same countries, we see again the same phenomenon. They are practically identical recorded, total recorded crime. Uh, we could uh, collect other data similar, uh, this was already presented by uh, Tony Doop, uh, Canada, uh, United States, that uh, repeats the same pattern. We could also uh, look at uh, different uh, U.S. states. This is Missouri, this is Minnesota, this is overall crime in Missouri, this is overall crime in uh, Minnesota, this is prisoner rates in Minnesota, this is prisoner rate trends, uh, 77 to two, uh, 2010 in uh, Minnesota. So basically similar crime trends in two states, a totally different uh, incarceration uh, uh, trends in these two states. Other examples would be also possible, but no. Uh, one caveat uh, on this uh, reservation, it's about murder and uh, lethal violence. Uh, it seems that in some occasions uh, uh, the prevalence of homicide is reflected in incarceration rates. And this is just one simple uh, comparison on that. Uh, this is the United States uh, 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 homicide rate <coughs> mid-2000s, and you see that in this respect, the, United, uh, the homicide level really is different, uh, the, and, and that might explain some of this uh, difference. Also, within the uh, states, uh, within different U.S. states, the level of homicide uh, correlates with incarceration, so they probably have a connection, but what kind of connection that is, that is another matter. Uh, one could argue, and that has been the topic of uh, this uh, morning's uh, some of the discussions, that there is a policy effect, that, uh, because the homicide does not affect in incarceration rate by its uh, volume, but of course uh, the, 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 uh, on, on the, the policy reactions because of crime. Uh, and that could be, in fact, well, this is, well, perhaps we have time. Even if the total crime curve in Missouri and Minnesota was practically identical, if we look at homicide differences, then you see that there is a level difference. In Missouri, the homicide has been much higher than in, in uh, Minnesota, but still it has been declining. Uh, so you could argue from this that, okay, it is the level of homicide that explains the differences in the trends, for example, but unfortunately you would also find very similar uh, homicide uh, curves with Idaho and Maine and with totally different uh, prisoner rates. So uh, this puts the, the uh, basic conclusion here that it's hardly possible to explain overall differences in national incarceration rates by differences in trends of crime. Uh, it may be possible to explain part of that variance by political responses, and of course, and this may be uh, associated with a high level, some high profile crimes. But basically, uh, one should start to look for explanations for the differences uh, from other sources. And that's the uh, topic of the second part of this uh, sh very, very, very short uh, speech. Uh, so what I'm trying to now uh, to summarize uh, very quickly some of the findings that is based on, on uh, 
empirical testing with different samples, trying to see uh, uh, which factors, social, political, economic, uh, attitudinal factors, uh, might explain differences between different countries. And there seems to be, after doing uh, uh, this, this, these comparisons, there seems to be a pattern, general pattern that ties together a certain type of uh, political cultures and structures. That is the first step, with a corresponding type of welfare regime or uh, welfare state, what, which is the second step, uh, which in turn sustains and supports certain set of social values, uh, moral sentiments, uh, and differences in degrees of uh, legitimacy. And these uh, links uh, uh, and, and, and these, these factors, they are interconnected. Uh, in a manner, try to make it very quickly, this, uh, uh, in a manner that the uh, important link goes from political culture depending on the nature of the political culture, uh, whether it is a negotiation culture or a conflictual culture, uh, uh, what is the degree of corporatism, what is the role of uh, trade unions. Uh, that matters on, 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 uh, on uh, the existence or the strength of a welfare state, uh, how strong it is, which in fact is then closely connected with the experience, social security, solidarity, and equality in the societies, which again is uh, conductive uh, to the levels of trust uh, and legitimacy, also experience fears and, and uh, the, uh, punitivity. So this is uh, the, the, the basic uh, structure which can be found. You find strong correlations with each of these factors and with in, in differences in incarceration rates. You find also strong correlations between these uh, different factors, and that, in fact, is the, 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 the important part. Of course, then you have to add a uh, uh, lot of other things, uh, which makes this is there is no simple explanation. Uh, you, there is a, a lot of uh, uh, other elements. Media culture is very important, and that is also dependent on, on the political culture. Uh, uh, it depends. It, 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 it's of much importance what is the type of, type of media regime. Does media have, for example, educational uh, duties uh, which, which are supported and uh, publicly funded, or is it uh, basically totally commercial, uh, for example? And then judicial, bureaucratic, and structural uh, practices, how sentencing discretion is regulated. Are there elect judges or are uh, career uh, judges uh, and, and uh, issues like that? But the point is that depending how these elements are organized, uh, then that affects, uh, that has a lot of uh, relevance on the fact whether criminality and crime is affected, uh, whether what type of role that has, the level of crime, what type of role it has on uh, 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 penal policy and the use of imprisonment. So uh, that was very, quick, I don't know, uh, uh, how successful summary of, of, of uh, the, the structure or basic scheme. Uh, there would be a lot of uh, examples to show th these, these associations, uh, but I, I will skip them very quickly. Uh, in fact, just showing, and now the idea is to test whether this scheme fits to the United States, uh, because this scheme is built on the basis of European, uh, uh, European comparisons, and now to see what happens if we introduce uh, United States in the picture. So this is a European uh, comparison, for example, now, based on uh, the, the, the correlation between income inequality, which means the fairness of the distribution of income, in this end, you find states uh, with a fair distribution of income here, states uh, with, a, with a, a, a larger income differences. And this, again, is uh, incarceration rates. So what you see that 
in regions and states, these are Scandinavian countries, with a fair distribution, low income differences, you find also low imprisonment rates, and the larger uh, the, uh, welfare differences grow, uh, the, the higher the incarceration rates grow. And you find the same also now in the social expenditures, how much states are uh, investing in, in social protection. States which invest a lot have basically lower incarceration rates. So the strength of uh, welfare state and uh, the, the extent of welfare differences is correlated strongly uh, with, uh, with the extent of punishment. What happens if we now, uh, because this is now without the United States, we do the same comparison, we add uh, United States here, of course the scale uh, changes completely, but the uh, profile uh, remains the same. United States fits quite neatly in this picture, even though it's in, 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 a, in a total, uh, in, a, in a own position, which would say that uh, when it comes to now, this is income differences, when it comes to the wel uh, welfare income differences, that would predict for the United States a prisoner rate about 300 uh, or 250. So there are about extra uh, four or 500 prisoners. And the same would apply also if we look at now the, uh, the investment in, in social welfare. Uh, we could uh, repeat these uh, <coughs> uh, analyses by other indicators. Social trust is uh, associated with the use of imprisonment. High trust societies imprison less people. And also when it comes to political trust, or let's say trust in justice, uh, just in a legal system, you find that, that the same uh, uh, pattern is uh, especially wrong, uh, strong uh, among uh, Western countries. If we fit uh, United States in this, uh, it becomes less clear. It doesn't fit so well, but when it comes to trusting police, uh, 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 fairly well. But anyway, at least what you could say from this basis is that again, uh, United States is partly on the same, uh, on, on the correct direction, but the level of incarceration is very different. Fear of crime and uh, uh, punitive attitudes correlate with the use of incarceration generally. Uh, adding the United States in this picture, especially in the punitivity dimension, the United States is fairly punitive on, on public punitivity measurements uh, in, in, uh, on, on, on top of the scale. And on, on this comparison also, uh, United States is located in the right direction. So, uh, and the last one, well, that would be about if we would measure uh, the degree of uh, democracy by using, uh, for example, uh, 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 indicators. Well, this is one indicator uh, by, by Liebhardt, which uh, tries to measure the element of how consensual and negotiating, uh, how corporatist uh, the, the uh, democratic system is in contrast to whether it's uh, based on the division uh, in a two-party structure uh, and, and uh, in a structure that uh, can easily create uh, bipolarization in, in the political discourse. And that is a very strong correlation one can find. Consensual corporatist democracies, they tend to uh, present less population. Uh, and and if, if we add the United States here, uh, it, it already also fits uh, quite uh, neatly. So uh, uh, the basic result from this uh, is that uh, uh, this scheme, uh, United States fits fairly well into this uh, scheme, uh, but of course the interesting part is that could we explain, uh, extend this analysis, uh, could we explain the differences that can be found in the United States between different states? Uh, and for that purpose, uh, then I, I was a bit surprised I did not find uh, ready-made analysis. They may exist, uh, and, and I would be very glad to, to, to uh, have. Uh, there, are, there are some uh, based on uh, social indicators, uh, uh, but, uh, but not, not much. So I made a very, uh, this is now, this is a footnote, uh, this is a closing footnote to this analysis. Uh, some uh, 
uh, tentative uh, results. Uh, if we rank the states according to the social spending, how much they invest in, in, in uh, social services using, using uh, certain basic indicators, uh, you would see a strong uh, correlation. States that invest uh, uh, more on social services, uh, this is now ranking, so in, in the left corner you see a state with the highest ranking on the investment on social services are states with a lower level of incarceration. Uh, and that would fit uh, to the general trend you would find if you look at the period of uh, when uh, prisoner rates started to, to rise uh, 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 exceptionally, uh, uh, in, in an exceptionally uh, strong manner, and you look at the investment, general investments in social services. I just, this is from, a, just picked up from, from, uh, from, from a I'm not saying it was Wikipedia, but it uh, has a reliable source. Uh, it's the average monthly uh, benefit per recipient uh, in 1963 to 2006, in uh, 2006 US dollars. And what you see that from the mid-70s, uh, precisely from the point when the uh, prisoner rate started to go up, uh, uh, investments in social welfare have been going down. You would find the same result comparing social trust uh, in, uh, across the U.S. states. Uh, and you would find that the period of increasing uh, uh, incarceration was also the period of declining social trust in, in the United States. So, um, I can skip those because there is no time. i uh, tried to make a conclusion, which is that I don't have uh, any uh, <laughs> definite conclusions. Um, I could say, on this basis, it could be said that as a whole uh, and as a federal state, the uh, uh, United States seems to fit fairly uh, well with, with the uh, general structure, which uh, puts uh, or, or uh, points out at least three major uh, elements, the type and quality of democratic processes, um, the strength of the welfare state, and uh, the level of social and institutional trust. Uh, and these three elements are also the same key elements that would place the Nordic countries uh, uh, in another corner, and the United States in another corner, and England and Wales also uh, very close to that uh, with, uh, with, with the United States. Uh, so much for that comparison. Now I must add that uh, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, Perhaps I should have been talking about the Nordic countries, which I know much, much better. Uh, that that uh, if you would talk with any of the colleagues in the Nordic countries, in Sweden, uh, Norway, or in Denmark, they would be very critical on what's going on, on what's happening at the time in, in these countries. We, that totally, we are not happy with what, what's going on. But uh, of course, the size of the problem is it's different and, 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 and relative in that sense. For example, we had a uh, a period of uh, increasing punitivity in, in the end of the uh, 90s, uh, uh, and our prisoner rates uh, jumped from the level of uh, 65 to 70, 75, but then they went again, uh, uh, went again down. Uh, and at the moment, for example, the Finns are worried about the possibility that the use of suspended sentence for rape offenses would be uh, reduced from its present level, which is about 40% of rape cases are convicted on suspended sentences. That probably would not be a, a problem here. So this was a bit unsystematic uh, description uh, of the Nordic uh, uh, situation and an effort to, to give an overview of the trends and differences uh, in the use of incarceration and efforts to explain those differences. So, thank you. I try to answer all the questions you have. All right. Well, we are, uh, thank you for keeping on time. Uh, so, uh, we have people with microphones, so let's have questions. Um, I will 
call on the person who has the microphone. Uh, there's one. My name is George Johnson. I have a question. Um, I, I saw a slide up there that interested me. Um, the fears, uh, fears and, and punitivity chart, uh, from a sociological standpoint, can you, I have two questions. First one is, from a sociological standpoint, can you, can you tell us what drives fears? What is the impetus behind fears? That's the first question. And the second question is, is, is there a direct relationship between the level of fear and punitivity? Yes, thank you. Uh, these comparisons which are made now on the level of, uh, it's a level of macro data, a level between countries, but uh, they, they seem to apply also in an in individual level, even though they, they are weaker. Uh, and uh, certainly on a macro level, you find that the, the, a clear correlation, it's difficult now to say, uh, say about the causality, but you find a very clear correlation between the level of fears and the level of social security, uh, the level of uh, uh, income differences, uh, level of uh, welfare differences, meaning that those states or those societies which are socially secure uh, with, with a strong welfare states, they are also societies which have lower fears. Uh, this is the, the overall uh, general uh, uh, general uh, uh, correlation uh, and the other one was that is, there, is there a direct uh, relation between fears and, and uh, punitivity uh, well there is a very strong correlation again uh, but 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 uh, uh, and one could assume that it goes from fears to, uh, to punitivity. Uh, and you could also, uh, if, if you look at the, what explains punitivity, you would find uh, that those predictors you can use in explaining the, the level of uh, the use of imprisonment, uh, uh, they are pretty much the same that explain also attitudinal punitivity uh, and, 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 and public uh, punitivity, the abuse of, of the public. And they are again become very uh, back to the same, uh, same indicators uh, that relate to the, the strength of, of, the, of the welfare state and uh, welfare differences. Okay, I think the Thank next you. question is in back. Okay. Uh, my name is Bill Cook. I'm a state court judge here in handling criminal matters, and I have, I have two different questions, and if I may. The first one is, uh, what efforts are you aware of in the Nordic countries in particular that are legislative controls over judicial discretion through sentencing guidelines or mandatory minimum sentences like we have here? And then the second one is that in the late 70s, early 80s, throughout the U.S., we Basically, we're dealing with one problem with mental illness being having our people kind of warehoused and not treated appropriately. And there is a push to get them out into the community, but we didn't have mental health facilities set up in the community. So right now, as you know, anecdotally, I can tell you that you know, a very large percentage of the defendants who appear in court are have mental health issues as well as chemical dependency issues. So I'm wondering how the Nordic countries or other European countries are dealing with those issues kind of outside the criminal process. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you repeat the, uh, the, the question part on, on concerning judicial discretion and sentencing guidelines? Sure. Um, we have sentencing guidelines that are set up on both the federal and state level where um, for particular offenses and criminal histories, we have grids that we look at and judges are expected um, to sentence within that presumptive range. We can deviate if we find appropriate reasons and we can document it and that sort of thing. But otherwise, we have a pretty narrow range of sentencing options. And then mandatory minimums is when our legislators say, you know, for rape, for instance, you're gonna get this, or for murder, it's this, or your third drug offense, you're gonna get a certain sentence of imprisonment, which 
mandatory minimums, it's a shell. <laughs> so there's very little discretion in the trial court. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, as regards the sentence in discretion and sentencing system, the Nordic, uh, Nordic, Nordic systems and the continental European ones, uh, uh, for example, the one you could find in Germany, they differ. Uh, uh, clearly, uh, it's been based on, on a division of labor uh, between uh, the legislator uh, and, and the courts. And uh, in, in, uh, basically, there are there are penal lat latitudes uh, for the courts uh, in a kind of like a guidelines. But I think they are much broader. Uh, meaning, for example, for a normal case of uh, theft offense in Finland, you had uh, the, the uh, leeway from fines to one, uh, one and a half year. If it's an, a grand theft, you have a leeway from four months to four years. And that is the, 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 the range uh, under which uh, the, the court is functioning. And again, there is a possibility of uh, going below the minimums. They are always open in that sense that there's a long, long list of reasons uh, that, that, that uh, can justify that. The courts are given uh, legislative uh, principles uh, and criteria to, to, to direct their sentencing uh, discretion, uh, but they are flexible norms in a way that there, there is, uh, it, it, it's, it's not binding legislation. Uh, in addition, uh, and this applies especially to Finland, but the same, same logic is also in uh, other countries, that the courts uh, uh, feel a, a strong duty uh, to, to, to uh, strive towards uh, uh, uniform, uh, 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 uniform sentencing in the, in the sense that there will be no unwarranted uh, uh, disparities or deviations uh, from the practice penalty. So now this added all together, which means that when uh, research is producing uh, sentencing data on, on what is the typical sentencing uh, 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 ranges, uh, then the courts uh, will uh, use those ranges uh, basically as their starting point. Uh, and uh, then if they deviate, then, then they will uh, give their reasons for that. But this makes the difference between now, in the, in the end, the difference comes that uh, uh, the guidance given by the legislator is much wider. It, it's not so exact, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, the, the latitudes are, are fairly wide. Uh, and also that it's a possibility to deviate uh, uh, below, uh, go below the minimum. Uh, guidance uh, is then given, for example, in higher court decisions about some direction uh, uh, or, or argue, uh, some, some criteria, about more exact criteria given. But it's really a, a, a different type of uh, system and the idea that it would be possible to give uh, uh, give by, by other authorities a, 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 a guideline uh, tables for the judges, that would be uh, impossible in, in, in that setting. So it would be a, a breach of the, the independence, independence of, the, of the courts. Uh, uh, about the mental illness, uh, I think we have, the, the certainly is the same problem because uh, uh, the health surveys among the uh, prisons and prisoners they they, they 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 show that there is a lot of a lot of people who suffer uh, of a mental health problems in in the prisons uh, if it if it is a case that that you you, you really can uh, uh, make a diagnosis of serious uh, disturbance or or, or, or uh, of, of mental health then these are dealt uh, then it's a case of, uh, of, of uh, uh, lacking mental capacity. And uh, now it depends on the country. The decisions are taken. Uh, it's, it's a care order taken in Finland by the medical authorities. In Sweden, they have a specific sanction for, for that. It's, 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 again, it's a hospital placement, uh, not, not the prison, but it's pronounced by the court. Uh, so uh, uh, the structure may be different, but the end result is that people with the most serious mental health problems, they end up in hospitals, not in prisons. Okay, um, we have, we are almost out of time. So we have two uh, people with two microphones. I think the next one in line uh, was the gentleman back here. Uh, and then we have Professor Duff. And if we have quick questions and quick answers, we can do them both. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, my question relates to, to guns and the availability of guns in, in the United States as opposed to most other parts of the world. Uh, does your research, uh, I, I know th there was, uh, the data was closer when it, when it came to murders. Does your research in any way indicate that uh, that may be the, the, the missing variable, the fact that uh, we have um, you know, more guns than people here and the fact that uh, 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 violent crime tends to be lethal, uh, lethal uh, and deadly uh, crime. Uh, now, does it, the, do you refer explaining differences in, uh, in, in uh, violent crime, differences in uh, lethal violence uh, uh, because of the difference availability of guns? Is that a, That's it, yes. Okay. Uh, Nordic uh, homicide, especially the Finnish one, uh, homicide is a special problem for Finns. We have double the number of homicide, at least, as the other Scandinavian countries, and that's a long tradition. But anyway, those uh, <laughs> relates to our drinking habits. Uh, the, 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 those uh, are uh, conducted with knives, usually, uh, stabbings. Uh, uh, as far as there are guns involved, they may be different type of guns. They are shotguns uh, to be used in, 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 in hunting. We have, uh, I think we have uh, uh, almost as many guns as you have in the United States per capita uh, because the, of the hunting tradition, and, and, uh, but, but that's different than, than having a lot of handguns, which, which are more dangerous. So uh, uh, about one quarter uh, or little less of uh, uh, homicides are committed with, with guns. Uh, so, yes, I think the answer to your question is that the part of the difference explaining differences in, in, in uh, homicide is related to the differences of avail availability of guns, especially handguns. Uh, but the uh, high Finnish homicide rate compared to the Swedish one, then it comes to the, the alcohol uh, uh, use and social marginalization. Uh, there is a clear difference with the US homicide and, and the Finnish one is that the Finnish homicide is committed by alcoholicide uh, men of the age of 14 uh, to 50s uh, who are socially marginalized and uh, have uh, serious social problems. It's not gang violence, it's not drug related, it's not juvenile uh, crime. Okay, so we're almost out of time, but uh, we have one more question from Anthony. Yeah, we heard this morning that one difference between Canada and the States is that they're far more, far more pessimistic about what criminal law can do by reducing crime, and therefore also less prone to devalue offenders. That second contrast does seem to hold between America and large parts of Western Europe. Does the first contrast hold as well? Are Europeans more pessimistic about what, how much law can do? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I, I uh, certainly uh, would, would say so. Uh, we had the, the, the clearest and the most dramatic example comes from Finland in a way because we used to have, the, as you saw in the graph, we used to have three to four times more prisoners than the other, uh, other Nordic countries. And we changed that in, in a fairly uh, short time. And uh, one of the major, major, if you look at the uh, attitudinal uh, background for that change was a general conviction in the 60s that the criminal justice system is really not the answer to the, uh, to the crime, uh, that the other, other social policy measures were, were, were the uh, uh, primary uh, measures for that. And that was also the, the whole uh, uh, research at that time, uh, which, which was pointing, uh, pointing to that the same direction of, 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 of a poor uh, reconviction rates, after, especially after institutional treatment, of, of, after a uh, prison system, uh, they, they were supporting that view. And it is still, uh, this is an important point here to make, it is still the general approach uh, in, uh, uh, also in a governmental uh, crime policy. i just take one example. We have a national crime prevention program uh, for preventing violent crime, uh, and specific uh, pro uh, program for 
preventing alcohol-related violent crime, which is the most important one. Criminal law is hardly mentioned in, in the whole program. The program starts with, with the general statement that the, the uh, major risk and major cause uh, uh, behind uh, violent crime is social marginalization. And all the, uh, all the measures and uh, uh, targets and actions relate on, on the other hand, on the regulation, uh, on controlling risk drinking, and on the other hand, on uh, social services, mental health services, and, and uh, 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 related, uh, related actions. So yeah, the, with my poor English, the answer to your question was yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I we're out of time, but thank you very, very much for your interest.